this John? Oh, Why is this John? <laughs> 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 That's right. You know, please cover yourself. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. <laughs> Lord God, thank you for bringing us together and enabling us to enjoy one another and and other stuff. Uh, God, <laughs> I don't know, Lord. You got to forgive me on that one. Uh, guide us as we uh, try to understand Methodists a little bit. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, we um, and and we are not going to be here for four hours we, we, like we have oh, okay. the last few weeks. It's, you know, maybe. You mean the two hours? Good, Carl, we're not going to have yeah. anymore. <laughs> I was going to say tonight wouldn't matter. Oh, wouldn't matter. Yeah. Oh, I like that yeah. two-hour yeah. session. Oh, oh, was oh good. Carl, well, thank you. Because I missed my show. <laughs> 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 well, okay, so we're, we're, we're talking about within the body of Christ, talk about Christianity, mm -hmm. and just so that we're on the same page, and I do this over and over again, because we got to make sure we're on the same page. What are things that Christians believe? Yeah. Jesus Jesus. Christ. Okay, Trinity. Jesus. 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 Baptism. 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 Resurrection. Resurrection. <laughs> Holy Prayer. Spirit. Holy Spirit. Look at Sandy's got a number. Easter eggs. Well, we kind of fell down on Easter eggs, uh, <laughs> but it was a yeah, it had something to do with Easter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Resur Easter resurrection. The Lent season. Yeah, yeah, the season leading up to Easter Lent. Uh, uh, baptism in there. Baptism is always good. Uh, communion's always good. Mm -hmm. Chocolate bunnies? Uh, no, chocolate bunnies are not, <laughs> are not necessarily good. Uh, but we do have things like um, uh, certain symbols, like crosses and such, or, you know, Christian. Now, uh, sacred scripture, you know, that's Christian. Uh, the uh, If you don't have one of these elements, you may be, what? Fun of parties, Fun of parties mm -hmm. but you are not necessarily a Christian, <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, now we so we did that. We talked about Roman Catholicism, and in two sentences, tell me about Roman Catholicism. Suffering. Pick your Suffering. Words. You did it in one word. I did. Yeah, <laughs> because that's kind of you know Roman Catholicism kind of focuses on on the suffering. Christ of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ on the cross. That's that's really important. Mm -hmm. And again, now, cult yes. Yeah. And, and this has nothing to do with this, but the other day I'm watching T V and Madonna has a or a, uh -oh. the Catholic schools in Wharton have a commercial one. Right. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. I have. I have. And they have the cross. Right. No Christ on it. That's interesting. And that's I, I wonder, I wonder well, I wonder why they didn't you know, if they if that's one of their well, one of their things. Well, a lot of yeah, Catholics yeah, don't believe in yeah, to really. Excited, yeah, no, it's crazy. Just rather than the, yeah. 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 Well, well, rather than the school much. themselves making yeah, the choice. Yeah, when they make the commercial, Catholics they, they really didn't focus acknowledge. And it's a possibility. Well, it could be that the appeal is to go beyond. Yes. Beyond yeah. Catholics, yeah. or that this, you know, the crucifix would well, cut out on some of, the, some of the some of Protestants. Son of God, but that's good. If it. any of us were thinking of going to Madonna, or not even not thinking of going to Madonna, but uh, watching a commercial, and would that prevent you from thinking of going to Madonna if it had the crucifix? I don't know. I don't think I'd. It wouldn't yeah. me, but it hey, might be. I think it yeah. might some, some people. Who, you know, I don't think I so. I think it either. might. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Well, how about the other the way no. then? If, since it doesn't have it, I don't think people does that Madonna for that. would cause Catholics, some Catholics, Catholics, some Catholics not to not go. go. Yeah, that's a good it question. Evid evidently, somebody who did the commercial the thought teaching. that they could. Yeah. Not having no, I, I a crucifix that anything, was that, better that than oh, having a cross road rather road than a crucifix. Or maybe they just didn't have a picture. Or did? Or did? Or maybe they didn't realize yeah, the, the symbolism of it. Right. Right. Okay. Well. Anyway, so we got we got Roman Catholicism yeah, makes really, again you know I mean? a lot of sense in the cultural context. Images become very very important in early Catholicism and and ritual because you're talking about kind of pre 
literate people mm -hmm. just because there's nothing to read. And so rituals and images become really important, important as ways to learn. To learn. Right. So not unlike comic books, you know, as a way to, to learn. Okay. So <laughs> the, you've got, and, and suffering, that's something really easy for people in the Dark Ages to identify with, with a suffering Christ because their life was pretty much Bad. suffering. Yeah. Suffering, you know, they knew about yeah. suffering. Well, life is you know, <laughs> and so you know, telling people that they believe in Jesus and you're going to be blessed during this lifetime, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. far fetched for people living in the Middle Ages because yeah. their life was them. never going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. They were going to suffer until they die, and when they die, then they'll get the reward. They'll get but rest. they're not going to get a reward before they die. You know, by the way, that's, you know, one of the reasons Karl Marx said religion was the opiate, opioid of the people, because, you know, it kept people satisfied, peaceful, without demanding their rights until they died. They were so focused on life after death, they accepted, you know, certain facts of their lives that they could change, prevented them from asking for change. And so he said that was being used by those who had power to keep people in their place. Okay, now, now so it's football. now it's football. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now football does it. Does the same no, thing. No, not football. Okay. <laughs> no football. Opioid. Yes, that's right. Not All right. So, so we got Roman Catholicism. Again, cultural. We have at the same time developing in another part of the world. Eastern Orthodoxy, Eastern Orthodoxy and yeah. Eastern Orthodoxy. If if Roman Catholicism tended to focus on the the suffering. Where does Eastern Orthodox, the where do they, so they happy. really focus on the birth, the, happy. the incarnation, you know, that God becomes man, man so that man. man can become God. And so it's that incarnate, we participate in Christ, incarnation, it's a godliness, okay? But also very mystical, focus on, on rites and rituals that you don't have to understand. I was talking to somebody just the other uh, day about they had attended a huge Orthodox church in Orlando. And he said, um, I didn't understand anything that was going on. In fact, the sermon was done in three different languages. Oh, my. Oh. You know, three different languages. And and uh, he said Latin, but I don't think it was Latin. I think it was probably Greek. In English, Greek, and Russian. And he said, I, I didn't even understand the English one. Uh, and And that's okay. Because it's the whole experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so by you participating in this holy mystery, and remember that's, we said Eastern Orthodox called the sacraments holy mysteries. When you participate in this mystery, something you are participating absorbed. in... You're going to get something absorbed still. You will, you, but it's not going to be here. It's going to be yeah. here. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be, you're not going to think more. You're going to experience God. And by feel more, and as you experience God, you become closer to God. You know, again, if you're talking about a preliterate people that aren't reading things, you know, and just working to survive, that's what religion is trying to convey. That's the way you convey religion and icons, which are images, images, images. 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 So Roman it's Catholics are using word. images, but they're not calling them icons because of a big controversy. But Eastern Orthodox are calling them icons, icons because they're sacred images that enable you to feel closer to God. Okay, both of them are looking at the church and and uh, councils as conveying God's word, not just Bible, which is okay because nobody's got the Bible anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, those are in monasteries, you know, and only monks read. So it's okay better that the church is also giving divine word. That changes, right? When does that change? What do we call that time of change? Reformation, Reformation yeah. right? And like I said, perfect storm, what are just, what are the things that uh, what paper, creates this perfect storm? Movable print. Okay, you got paper, you got movable, you know, uh, movable type, you got plague, so the population is lower, people are eating better, you know, you got some climate things that are going on. You know, you got a whole bunch of stuff happening at the same time, and all of a sudden people are doing what? 
the praying. They're, they're, they're well, have oh, even you're house. right, but, but what are they even doing more than praying? They're reading. They're, they're, reading. they're, they're reading, reading, and as soon as they start reading, they start thinking. thinking. They start thinking, and as soon as you start thinking, you start questions. Who asking questions. questions? Right? You just don't accept. I mean, when you, when you're working twelve hours a day to survive that day. Man, you're not going to be asking many questions. Uh -huh. You know, you are just trying to... Just the you're just trying to get through the day. But when you're working eight hours or ten hours a day, you know, now you got two hours... For nothing to do. Yeah, to think a little bit. Yeah, think a little you bit. You know, understand at the same time, you, you're seeing these wonderful innovations in farming. You know, because people start having time to think about, I'm how can I do this farm. better? You know? Uh, so and labor becomes more specialized, and so you got good people thinking about how we can make better plows. You know, so all of a sudden things start changing, and people start thinking. And how does that influence religion? What happens in Christianity as all of a sudden we've got more people reading, more people thinking? You interpret the Bible differently. Okay, people start interpreting it different. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they start looking at the Bible as a text to study. Yes. You know, and and focus on. So other things become secondary. The Bible becomes a focus. Mm -hmm. And when some folks start reading the Bible, they start mm -hmm. asking yeah. questions, yeah. coming to different conclusions. Okay. And who are some of the people that are coming to different conclusions? Luther. Martin, Luther. Martin Luther starts coming to different a different conclusion. Medieval monk who feels guilty. really guilty. Guilty about everything. You know, and starts reading the Bible and what? Can't quite understand things. Yeah, that the church is doing. All, all of a sudden, you can never. The Bible says that what he's been feeling is appropriate. That you can't do enough because the church, the Catholic Church, is saying, you know, again, give people a structure and they can live the faith. Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church says, do these things, and you're fine with God. And Luther's doing these things, but doesn't. Get with doesn't feel or think yeah. he's close to God. You know, even though he's doing these things and he's doing them sort of hyper, you know, all these things, he still doesn't feel close to God. So he's reading Romans, thunderstorm going on out there. What hits Luther? Like a lightning bolt. What hits him? Grace 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 grace, 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 grace. That it's not what you do, it's what, what God has done. And you respond by faith and bang, all of a sudden that changes. And he gets that, though, from reading. And he he's a reformer, so he wants to do what? Change, change the church. The church says, I don't want to be changed. You know, they call the Council of Trent, and they sort of clean up their act, but they're not changing the fundamental theology of the church. The church is the same. You know, it is a church of, of, of sacraments, of ritual, of rites that view God's word in a broader sense. So they change, but it's not in the direction Luther sang. Now, at the same time, we got princes and political stuff going on that it becomes politically advantageous for land. Yes, for land, for princes to become, to adopt that, to adopt that because then they can confiscate church land. So you've got a, a, this complex thing going on in northern Germany. That's Luther. And Luther's perspective on, on Christianity is fundamentally what? How does he approach? Faith alone. Well, he says faith alone. What about the rights of the church? Ditch them all, dump them all. No, he's, no, he's he's laid back on that. Yeah. You know, the rights of the church are fine as long as we uh, have faith. You know, so the rights are fine. No, no problem with saints. No problem with the the communion changing. It doesn't change physically. You know, but it changes spiritually. No trouble with the spirit being in the waters of baptism. Got no problem with that. I thought they believe in the changes. It changes, spiritually changes, but not physically. Okay. Roman Catholics believe it changes physically. Lutherans say it changes spiritually. Oh, but Luther didn't change, say that, did he? Yeah, Luther says there's, that's called consubstantiation, okay, well, that the elements like, change spiritually. He to change that, yeah, he'd like to, but it's not a huge jump because he says, let's get real, guys. That wafer is not actually blood fla or fl flesh. We know that. The wine doesn't taste like blood it tastes like wine so we know physically again this is very rationalist we know rationally 
that it's not actually blood and it's ac not actually flesh, but it has changed. So if you've got a bag of wafers here and wafers on an altar that's been blessed here, it's those wafers are different. Yeah, they're different. You know, you don't take those wafers and put them back in the bag. Mm -hmm. You know, after communion, you don't take that juice, that wine, and pour it back into the bottle yeah. later because it is blessed. Di yeah. sacred. It's different. Sacred. It's changed. Catholics say it's physically changed. Lutherans say it's spiritually changed. So Luther's kind of laid back on, on some of this, but it's, it, the focus is on faith. What's another? Give me another name that we talked John about. John, John Calvin. Calvin. And John Calvin, if Luther's laid back, John Calvin... Go is not laid back. You know, he is not laid back. While Luther is saying, well, if it doesn't say no, it's probably all right, if it's meaningful. You know, Calvin is saying, it's not here. if it doesn't say yes, you better question it. You know, so Calvin's perspective is, is really different. And what, although Luther talks about it, doesn't go into as much depth about it, and oh, nor is he is consistent. What does Calvin say about relationship with God? What does who does Calvin put at the top? God. 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 Who is second? Christ. God. Who is third? God. 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 Who is fourth? God. God. Where are we? Forty-eight. <laughs> you know, that's where we are. You know, because it's God, 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 and then us. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it, it's 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 all God, sovereignty of God. And what does he say about human beings? Predestined. And we talked about pre. We talked about predestined, and and they are sinful, mm -hmm. you know. And but sin for for Calvin, just like it is for for Paul, sin is just state of being. It doesn't mean you do nasty things. It's just You'd like you could call it human nature. You call could call it limitations. It is just what you are. You, you and you know that because you're gonna what. What's going to happen? You're going to die. Okay. And you're going to die, and that means you must be, it must be sin. Not because you do bad things, but that's just the way what, you, that's just what you are. Like, like I said, we were talking about it earlier. It's like calling it human nature. Human beings are going to die. That means human beings are human beings. He just uses the word hamatia, which is sin. It's not oh. sins. It is sin. Boom. Singular. Okay? Human beings are sinful, therefore human beings cannot do certain things. Like what? Be perfect. Live forever. Cannot be perfect, cannot live forever, <laughs> cannot be God. Be God. Be God. Yeah. You can't be God. You know, and never can, and there's not one cell in your body that can be like God. Therefore, if you were going to be redeemed at the end, who's got to do it? God. God. God's got to do it. And if God wants John redeemed, John ain't gonna he's gonna do it. John's going to be redeemed. No matter what. John's going to be redeemed. You know, period. End of discussion. Now, I, you know, I use John as an example because it's the most far-fetched. No, no. <laughs> uh, the, uh, but use John as an example. But if John's going to be redeemed, John's going to be redeemed, right? Yep. And it's not even up to... It, John, it's up to God. It's up to God. Okay, and that's what Calvin says. And that because of that, as you live your life, do you have to worry about where you're going to spend your future? No. no. Heck no. You don't have to worry about your future. Is anybody downstairs? I hear the... The, the, the Girl Scouts right? are downstairs. It's not yeah. what, John. It's not. Huh? It's not. Uh-uh. Uh, but the... Um, so you don't worry about it because that's in God's hands. What do you worry about? Day -day. Oh, how do you live day to day? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What you're gonna have for supper? Exactly. Or you know how you treat right. the people around you. Right. You know, right. or for dinner for the certain chosen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Presbyterian Presbyterians, we can have you know like banquet dinners. You know that you go because we all the. Frozen chosen. <laughs> so we, we can we can have those that stuff. Um, yes. Well let's do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. yeah, I know. I, yeah, I wouldn't know about that. Uh, okay, so so we nobody there. Uh oh. Uh oh. No one there. It ain't even dark yet. It's not even dark yet. Okay. Well, um, so, so that's what that's what Calvin is teaching. Now, it, you, we talked about Anglican, Episcopal. 
you know, what is, oh, just with, just with the Calvin, what's, how does that translate into like worship? If Calvin is saying, you know, God is sovereign and you question anything you do to check it out with the Bible, how does that affect how you worship? Calvinist worship. It's not the Bible, then don't do it. Don't do it. So Calvinist worship is Bible-centered. Bible-centered. Now, I I avoid saying Bible-based because that's making a judgment about the other groups that also see themselves as Bible-based. Calvinists would say we are Bible, Calvinists are Bible-centered. So sermon, 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 sermon. You know, boom. That's, That's at the center. And everything else is really simple. Really, really simple, because there's not a lot of ritual, because not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. Okay. Ah! Da 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 da! Woo! He came through the window. Huh? <laughs> did you ring the doorbell? Yeah. Okay. The door's what? open. How did you get past? <laughs> I know, but I didn't try it first. You know me. Oh. <laughs> Okay. I wasn't sure you were yeah. going to yeah. 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 you. Yeah. 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 The National Church, Henry VIII, oh, warning okay. new wives, oh, okay. you know, that kind of thing. But but the key is a national church, not a lot of theology involved. No, no. You know, not a lot of theology. But we did last week talk about theology with the Armenianists. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, when, nice and what are the Armenianists? <laughs> How, who are they reacting to? How Who is Armenius reacting to? Methodist. Oh, John. John Calvin. Because John Calvin, he says is way too harsh. Takes away what? All your fun. Free will. Takes away fun. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Calvin's don't do anything. (laughs) 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 The truth, bud. It's the truth. I've only been coming two years. Takes away your fun. (laughs) Actually, actually what's kind of interesting is when you look at it, Calvinists should actually have more fun than Armenianists, because <laughs> Armenianists believe what? What do they believe? Yeah, that you have free will. You, okay, in a sense. Yeah. What do Armenianists believe? Choice. Your relationship with God is based on purity. What you do, what you do no. is based on what you do. Faith, having okay. faith. Yeah. But okay. the problem is when you start saying ha- having faith, all of a sudden you've got, well, how do you... How much? Sure define that and mm-hmm. and determine how much you need, and so an Armenianist might say, "Ooh, I am I am chosen." Remember, they they Calvin talks about cho- choosing Armenians, talk, but for Armenianists, the pe- the people who are chosen are the ones who have chosen. You know, it's not God mm-hmm. chooses us and we respond. It is I we choose God so. and. Mm-hmm. Responds. God responds. Come, you know, what Come what may. Therefore, you know, an Armenianist may get really nervous. Should I do this? If I do this, does it mean that God might not choose, choose me? Anymore. You know, so if I do this, you know, maybe I might I might blow it. But what about the people that down. want to do it and they think they're going to stay in the church? Well, that becomes complicated. Yeah. Because, you know, I want to do it, but my church says no. That means I pretty much what? I have to find another church, yeah. you know, uh, you know, that allows me to do that. So it gets, it, it, Calvinists, I think, kind of get a bad rap because if you believe your eternal destiny is in the hands of God, you know, all of a sudden you have... You really do have freedom. Yeah. yeah, you do have freedom. Because it's not grounded in what you do. It's grounded in what God has done. And the reason you do good is different than the reason the other way. Or not do something is a little motivated by something a little different. You don't do something because it hurts you or hurts somebody else. Therefore, I'm choosing not to do it, but not because it makes God happier. happier you know, and I don't want an angry God. When I do, when I don't do this, instead, I'm choosing not to do it because I know it's going to hurt me. And God created me; it's going to prevent me from doing what God wants me to do. So the motivation changes. Mm-hmm. But Armenianists, you know, the key is God responds to 
that. you. Yeah. You know, therefore, you have not only free will, but you have a lot the of control. To choose. Uh -huh. A lot of control. Oh, you know, you have a lot of control because I mean, like, your destiny is grounded in. In what you do. Now, an Arminius would say, well, it is 99% God, but 99% ain't good enough. You still got to provide 1%. And if you don't provide 1%, 99 1% of what? Is not going to. Of, of what you need to to, to do to get yeah, yeah to to yeah. get it to happen or have eternal oh, life. Ninety nine is not good enough. No, well, no, no. Of oh, course it not. Does. <laughs> because if the if the minimum is a hundred <laughs> yeah. and you're at ninety nine, <laughs> you ain't made it. You ain't making it. You, you know you you failed it. It doesn't matter whether you fail by that's what I've heard. It's pretty rough. It doesn't matter whether you fail yeah. by fifty points or fail by one point. But you know you have still failed. Does he? Does he, do they believe that Christ died for our sins? Well. Y y Yes, in fact, they would say Christ died for everybody. Yes. But, and I've told you before, the most powerful word in the English language is but. is but, because it negates what comes before it. Christ died for everybody, but, but. it's not effective unless the person responds. You know, so Christ died for everybody, but it's not always effective. You know, what do you mean? Well, Christ may die for you, but unless you believe or do certain things, the death of Christ is not enough by itself. I never read that anywhere in the Bible. I agree with you, but the Armenians are saying that, but they're basing it on Scripture. You know, they're saying it because it's a reaction to Calvinism that seems to take away free will. And Armenians yeah. are giving it back. Giving it back. You know, giving it back. The, the downside is, do you want to be in control of your ultimate destiny? Do no. I want to be in control? The answer no, is no. 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 Because I'm going to what? I'm going to blow it. it. <laughs> you know, you know, it you know what imagine how dangerous it is because as soon as I'm in, then that would be the time to die. As soon as I'm good enough, that would be the time yeah. to die. But if I kill myself, then, oh, no. then I've blown it. You know, then I've blown it. So, okay. you know, I just have to be lucky enough to die at the very moment. Right time. Yeah, at the right time. Well, you know. If you're always good and always obey, then Never it's any time. Well, we're not all like you, Art. <laughs> we're not all like you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I think that. Okay. I'm glad so, I came tonight. So, I, all right. So, we've got, we've got, I mean, now, if you look at all of these, and and it makes sense because it's coming in this this time when people are really thinking a lot, right? They're reading and they're dealing with ideas. This is the, the time when John Locke is developing his theories of government, and early on, uh, uh, Adam Smith is developing his ideas with economics, and so we've got all this intellectual stuff going on. It seems as though faith is grounded in reading, reading. And in Bible study, Bible study, yeah. and in thought and interpretation, and and, and you know, the uh, Anglicans are into rituals. The Roman Catholics are into rituals. Yeah. The Calvinists are just analyzing everything. The Armenianists are analyzing everything. Everybody is thinking, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But they don't seem to be doing. Well, yeah. Any they're not, they may not be doing, that's true. That's going to be another response with the doing. Those are going to be the pietists. But what else aren't they doing? What, else, what part of the human being sure seems to be neglected? They're not making babies. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was adorable. You know, was nice all thing. those of you in Nigeria, <laughs> this, that, that, that response nice. is, is just... You picked the wrong Different. time. Oh, wait, I, that's, I, that, I'm being a horrible teacher. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. At least it wasn't a butt. Okay, that's right. At least it wasn't a butt. That's not too far off. That was a butt. Oh, no, not you, Hugh. No, no. Just recently in this country, mm -hmm. they were talking yeah. about some of the problems that we're sure. having. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're not, not having, having babies. We're, we're, we're bringing in a, a lot of information. Aliens, aliens. in that. Oh, right. Uh -huh. But yeah. we're not in our own country 
producing yeah. very many children. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see now. Oh, that's why it's a European it's, problem, too. And it's very, was, very low. A was, Western problem. But, yeah, uh -huh. It was my... Yeah. It, that was what well, I was uh, yes. Yes and no. And, and yeah, yeah, I think you could probably draw a connection. <laughs> 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 yeah, you could draw a connection. Uh, if, we're t if we're talking about things that are very intellectual, you're dealing with brain, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what is being neglected? The heart and soul. Well, heart. Let, me, let me clarify. It, it's, they weren't, they're not producing. It's not because of the <coughs> migrants. Right. Now, don't take offense, women. It's because the women are more interested in maintaining careers and not in raising children right right and uh okay, what did plato more. say i think it was plato it says, could uh, what uh, our most important thing is teaching children mm -hmm. and the second most important is who are we going to have to do it well, we're not going to be people from Hollywood, I'll tell you that. Not well, do we, we don't want to digress too. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we, what we've got is what we've got is uh, the the emotions, the emotions, and and what would, that's really linked to feeling. You know what you're doing. What they're doing is intellectualizing religion, and when you intellectualize religion, it becomes it becomes sterile. It becomes cold. It becomes ideas. And it doesn't make you feel good. feel good, or doesn't make you feel closer yeah. to God. Yeah. Making babies, does. and so makes you feel so good. <laughs> he has it on the brain. Oh, he's got making babies on the brain. Okay, <laughs> so um, baby. well, I'm sorry again. I apologize. <laughs> maybe. Thank you. Okay, maybe. Okay, so we're gonna have a backlash. <laughs> And, and that's a natural, that's a cultural backlash. You know, that religion has become so, so sterile and stiff. Actually boring. And boring. Great. You want something what? Exciting. 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 Yeah. Something Dude, that moves you. Something, something that gets you emotional. <laughs> music. And yeah. now, yeah. now, that's now. If, okay, good. So Something that has music. Now, is that going to be... Is that going to be easy to develop within Calvinism? No. No, no. no it's going to be hard to develop within right. Calvinism because yeah. Calvinism is so, by its nature, so yeah. intellectual. Yeah. Is it going to be something Armenianist? Mm -hmm. Is it going to develop there? Mm -hmm. no. no, it's not. Because no. Arminianists are also. They're, they're Calvinist. Yeah, they, they're kind of Calvinist. Uh, they are sort of un-Calvinist. Yeah. But they're, they're on that same level. Yeah. Which of the groups that we've talked about, the Protestant groups we've talked about, where you'd have the freedom to theologically move in a radical direction without leaving that group? The Anglicans. Why would Ang the Anglicans be the perfect place for this to sort of break out? You can do anything. That's right. Do. They're not based in theology. You know, Anglicans swung into Calvinism for a while, even into Presbyterian government, you know, and it's so it can swing because you don't have that, they're not set, locked into, set, yeah. yeah, into these, this intellectual theology. Hmm. And so Anglicanism, and that's where it's going to end up, uh, that's where we're going to see Methodism which is an emotional reaction to what's happening, break out in the, in the 17th century. Methodist. Now, Methodism. Yes. Now, who, when you talk about Methodist, Methodist ideas, who are the two folks that are sort of at the center? John two Wesley. people. Who? John, Wesley John Wesley and... His brother? His brother. And his brother's name is Charles. John and Charles Wesley. And they are both, they are, both of them are priests within the Anglican Church. Oh. Both of them are priests within the Anglican they Church. They don't have any more than that? Just two? Just, well, this is where it starts. Oh. The Wesley brothers. And when they look at, at when they look at Anglican, now, where has, Anglicanism doesn't have a theology, but it does have, structure and it does have a structure, structure, and it does have a liturgy. You know, that kind of draws it together, this national liturgy. When they look at how the Anglican Church is functioning, they see it as boring. 
<laughs> you know, they mm. see it as poor. Boring. You know, and they look at Anglican Thanks, priests brother. and they think Anglican priests are boring. 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 You know, because they go through rituals. the rituals mm -hmm. but don't seem to associate with the people. Well, they don't associate, and even when they associate with the people, it's Sterile. Yeah, it's just it like they're going through motions. Yes. You know, repetitive, it, repetitive. it doesn't. It doesn't seem like when you talk to like your mother. <laughs> like, like what? When you talk to your mother. <laughs> I'm just that's oh, true. that's true. <laughs> well, you, 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 maybe, maybe. Um, you know. There you go. Uh, Am I yeah. When you when you when you yeah, pick yeah, out yeah. that Mother's Day card, <laughs> you know that's. <laughs> Well, it's, it's much better than uh, a person I knew that had a bad relationship with his mother and had to pick out a Mother's Day card mm -hmm. that had, was a, um, uh, uh, didn't mention love, you know, so you, he didn't, so he, it, it would take him a long time to find a Mother's Day card that didn't involve love. Well, why not and, just buy the one that does cross <laughs> Even look better, yeah. He said a he said a lot of those humorous, those funny cards, you know. <laughs> so uh, like you do, yeah. <laughs> That's a short blank card and just fill it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do have those fillers. Yeah, they do. Uh, sins, major sins that they can make. What's that? What are some of the major sins that these religions you're talking about do? Well, against it, it it really depends on what, how you see you, your relationship with God. And we were funny, we were talking about it. If you see your relationship with God like a Calvinist, mm -hmm. what, what would, what, how do sins fit in yeah, to, for, for a Calvinist? That's what I'm asking. Well, the Ten Commandments? Commandments? Yeah, how would the Ten Commandments fit in? What would a Calvinist say about the Ten Commandments? Obey. You obey. Okay, you should, yeah. why? Because it's the words of God. Because, 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 because God, God wants you to, but, but is that going to influence your eternal destiny? No. No. It's, yeah. not going to it's not going to influence your destiny. Yeah. You may live a, a better life by obeying them. Mm -hmm. You are certainly going to get along with your neighbors better. Uh -huh. You're going to feel closer to God yeah. if you do it. You're going to be closer to God. Uh -huh. And that becomes conversion and Calvinism. You become closer to God as you obey what God tells you to do, and you're offering God thanks for what you're doing. But are you causing but, God to love you more? No. no. Well, of course not, because God loves you. Loves couldn't you. love you more than He does. Okay. And so it it changes how you view sin See. as action. Okay. Yeah. And but if you're an Armenianist, how would how might an Armenianist view Ten Commandments? Ah, well, they're structured. Same so thing, but you better make sure to, to you know, uh, how, how, you better make sure to tell, or, or what was that thing we talked about last week? Uh, I think I'm on the right track, I just can't say it. They're uh, choosing. Yeah, you um, better choose to do that and choose God what it, above. Okay. okay. Oh no, no, I was thinking, what, 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 to an Armenian, would it mean like a constant reminder? Like if the short, are we covering short. Okay, okay, that's really good because that's right. It, it becomes a reminder. You better choose God. And, oh, oh, it's important. I shouldn't should, shouldn't do like that. But since your relationship with God is based on the choice you make, which an Armenian could say, if you've really chosen God, you should be living the Ten Commandments. Oh. And if and if you have, if you want live in the Ten Commandments, you have deceived yourself mm -hmm. about choosing God. Okay. You know, could now another one might say no, that's not the case, but it could be. Uh, a Calvinist would say it it changes the life you live now because that's a folk, but it's not going to live change the life you live later. An Armenius would say it changes the life you live now and could affect the life you live, etern your et eternal life. <coughs> then what about the religions that have so many sins involved. Well, that what? that becomes a problem, and and that becomes a problem as soon as I think. Now, this is again, I'll add a little bit. As soon as you start saying that it's your your choice, when free will involves your eternal destiny, uh, when you say free will also applies to your eternal destiny, mm -hmm. now you've got a problem. How much is too much? 
how much is enough and how much is too much. And, and so if I say that all I have to do is like this, pray the prayer in the back of the, bull, or the, back of the pamphlet and accept Jesus into my life even if I don't understand it and I'm fine. If I put the bar that low, you know, then that's pretty low. That's all I have to do, therefore I can do anything else. But if I put the bar a little higher, where do I put it? You know, mm-hmm. do I ha- what rules do I have to obey? What rules can I, do I not have to obey? Well, that's where reading you know, comes in and you find out. What well, and that's where people, talking to people, all, yeah. Conscience. Okay, good. Yeah. Conscience and also human nature. Yeah. Because I'm far more, I'm far more likely to condemn something that you do and I don't do. Yeah. Then condemn something that I do and you don't, you know, because I'm human, human nature and sinful, you know, I'm more likely to do that. So, you know, it gets very, very complicated. I'm going to need to start doing what? Writing, your life. writing them down. I'm going to have to start writing this stuff down. And as soon as I start writing it down, what have I got now? I've got a list or what's another L word that means the same thing. Oh, you think you're out of the way of this I've got a law. I've got a new set of laws that I have to follow. You know, now they're Christian laws, but they are just the same. They are just as legal, right? Okay, that becomes, that becomes the danger. The danger on the Calvinist side is... The idea, well, if God, if you, if God's already chosen your future, your future mm-hmm. is secure. Let's say your future is secure. Then that means I can do what? Anything, anything I want. You know, I have, I can live without any standards at all. What and that mean? doesn't seem fair. Yeah. Yeah. Out of control. You know, I can live out of control. And so, yeah, Kev, you know, that That's people get here. nervous. Yeah. Well, you're going to run wild in the streets. On the other hand, if you go in the other direction, mm-hmm. how many laws do I need? You know, how do I define everything? And that's what ended up happening in Judaism. That's why we have the Old Testament. But the Jews don't just use the Old Testament. You know, because they have the Talmud, which takes the Old Testament law and breaks it down into hundreds of laws, you know, for each one. You know, uh, honor honor your honor your father and mother. Well, what the heck does that mean? Uh, I don't you know, know let that. me well, <laughs> let me write twenty laws to tell you if I'm honoring, if you're honoring or not. <laughs> so it becomes like potato chips. Yeah. You know, you got to keep on eating yeah. them because well, each law will eventually lead to another law. Will it lead lead to another law? That's it might exactly not right. Right away, but just like civil law. Right, and that's what Paul Something says. Something will come up. It leads to another law. Yeah, Paul says the same thing. Once you start with one law, you put one law, everything changes. Because if you've got one law, you need it. You're going to have a hundred more. You know, as soon as, and, and, and you've done something else. As soon as you have one law, you've got a hundred more. What have you totally eliminated for God. Paul? God. You've eliminated God. a G word. God. God. Grace. Grace oh. no longer exists. Grace. That's you know, yeah. grace is gone. Because you're, you are now... Assuming. You are redeemed by the law, your law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So God doesn't even need to be in the picture anymore. Anyway, that's what. But but so Wesley, the Wesley brothers are looking at Anglicanism and saying, "Man, this is so stiff and formal. We need to we need to relax a little bit. You know, we need to we need to get a little bit more emotional. Have a now, dance." Have a oh good. The Wesley hold that for just a second because that's really important. The Wesley, where the Wesleys, now remember, they're post-Reformation. Where are the Wesleys going to go to come up with ideas? Because they're, they're concerned about the sterility of yeah. Anglicanism, but Calvinism isn't better, Arminianism isn't better. They're all so stupid intellectual. Where will, a, an, where will an Anglican priest go to find? Here. Well, they, they are going to go to America, but yeah. what what... I'm not thinking of location. I'm thinking of source of information. Oh. Where are they going to turn? Bible. They're going to turn to the Bible. Correct. You know, because everybody is turning to the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. And when they turn to the Bible, they start seeing the Bible has different things, going on. Different things in it. Mm-hmm. And they see things in the Bible that are Beautiful. interesting. Interesting and fun. And people are mm-hmm. emotional and they feel bad and they feel good. And mm-hmm. it's not this sterile intellectualism yeah. that you know 
They're seeing all around them. You know, instead they see real people experiencing real emotions and and feeling it. And so that's what they want. They want to they want to convey that. Now, what how are they going to do that? Now, they're within the Wesley brothers are Anglican priests. So they are, they are not looking to leave the Anglican faith. What, how are you going to go, how would they go about doing that? What do you think would be some things the Wesley brothers would start focusing the on? Donations they take, should, they should be giving them to needy things like okay. hospitals. They, that's right. They, they're going to become very interested in, yeah. instead of buying a new chalice for the altar, right. you know, they're going to take their money and community service. do yeah. for community service because that makes you, makes you feel good. Oh, yeah. You know, giving makes you feel good, and it engages you with people. What else are they going to do? They're going to loosen up the service. They're going to loosen up the service. Now, Art, you said dancing. Yeah. Uh, when you talked about dancing, which is kind of an emotion, what do you need? What are some of the things you need to dance? Music. Two people. Music. Well, you need two people. You also need music. And music. and what kind of music is going to encourage the kind of dancing that? Kind of gets the fluids going. Church music, music. Yeah. Church yeah. music played on an organ. organ. Yeah. No. 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 There's a lot of polka. You're skipping the polka. Polkas. You're gonna get some polkas. Now, if I want to find music, if I want to find music that'll get the juices flowing, you know, get people excited, where am I gonna look? Who is playing the kind of music? Germany. Liberal, liberal. Well, okay, I might look at Germany. Where? Liberal Switzerland. You could, you could, I, and I, Later what I'm, su what I'm suggesting right. isn't a country, but a place within all countries. If I am in Switzerland and want to find some music that gets the flow, the juices flowing, am I going to the Calvinist church in Switzerland? No. Oh. Heck no. Because the 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 ah, well, good. I am going to go to a bar. A bar? Right? I was going to say the yeah. theater. I'm going to, okay. <laughs> okay. I just good. Oh, I'm going to go to the theater. I'm going to go. To I'm going to go to a pub. <laughs> what about watching? Tel yeah. What about watching television? Well, of course, they didn't Wesley have didn't have access to. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, I, again, again, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe. Uh, maybe. Well, then I'd be wondering what they. Have okay, for that. so the Wesley is the Wesley brothers want their services to be more energized. Now, understand, they still believe in sacraments. Mm -hmm. They still, they are Anglican people. They're still going to use the prayer book. Yeah. yeah. But let when we sing, let's sing something that people. Enjoy singing, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to the Wesley Brothers. Start drawing their music from the Bible, the Pro Proverbs, other Psalms churches from the Psalms. bar, from the bar. Oh. They start now, not the words, not the words. They're not singing oh. the words from the bar, oh. but they're taking the melodies yeah, because it's the yeah. melodies that that have stir you up. Now, yeah. if you if you write new words to these melodies, well, that's cool. Then all of a yeah. sudden, people start enjoying <laughs> singing. Yeah, yeah. Singing and that's why we're going to start. I've made a decision. We're going to start singing and work country western. Uh, Bob. Every <laughs> single <laughs> way. Sandy. I'll never go there. Country western. <laughs> country, oh country, God. country, country, country. Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> loves country <laughs> western. Oh, we don't. Line <laughs> dancing too. Someone tell you I don't like that. Did you tell me? <laughs> Hooray, I'm not going to bar anymore. I'm going to shoot. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yes. All of it, yes. When I was young, going to the Wesleyan Methodist Church, we never had communion. Communion. See, no one well, ever well, communion. They had well I, I'm communion. talking about the Wesley brothers. Communion. I haven't gotten to how it's practiced okay. later. Okay, so the Wesley brothers are going to are saying we need more energy in our service. So we're going to we're going to add more engaging music. Oh, in to, choirs, choir, the voice and, and people sing it. Yeah. You know, I want to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk to my daughter. My daughter is always singing, mm -hmm. but she never sings in church. Well, she never sings a, a mighty fortress is my God. You know, she doesn't sing that, but she sings pop music. She sings the song she likes. And that's what the Wesleys do. People are going to get really energized by singing that. Okay, what else are they going to emphasize? So they look in the Bible, they say the Bible isn't this sterile book. 
is full of emotions and excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay, they're going to draw, they want people yeah. to be more emotional. Yeah. They try to do music, it's going to be part of it. What else is going to be part of it? They're probably talking them out. What's bar. that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, more so. Creating that uh, sense of family. More, that sense of family, so you're going to build communities, and that's what they do. People Within the Anglican Church, instead of having, you know, just the service, they start what you hear about some in, in churches. They have small groups. And in these small groups, they start doing things together. One is social outreach, mm -hmm. taking care of folks. What else would they do they in these picnics? They could have picnics. Yeah, now remember, this is church. These are dinners. Wesleyans are dedicated. They believe in God. They feed the poor. They go feed the poor. What else are they going to do in those groups? They're going to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're going to have Bible studies. Yes, they're going to have a lot of praying, mm -hmm. and and a lot of the praying is going to be involve what? Will thou? Thou goddess of all gods, wilt thou no. bless? Oh, is that the kind of prayer they're going to do? No. What? How are they praying? Hey man, check this out. What's that? Hey man, check this out. Hey man, check this out. Not unlike the prayer I made earlier. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, you know, it's going to be a more and and it's they're going to make up. They're going to make more up their own prayer. Yes, and the prayers are going to are going to touch on people's emotions. Huh. Now, what are people emotional about? Love. When they're in church. Love. Okay, love. Family. 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 Death. Mm -hmm. Death. Mm -hmm. What are different what are troubles. different kind what are some of the different emotions that people can feel in in church? Joy. Happiness. 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 Joy. Sad, sadness. Grief. Sadness. Yeah. Uh, Excitement. Guilt. Excitement. Guilt. guilt. Okay, <laughs> if we're talking about guilt, what what would you want to have happen in that service? All if a guy all comes all in with guilt, God what do you God. want? Leave without guilt. Yeah. And that's what the Wesleys are that's what the Wesley brothers say. That scripture, when you go and participate in services, and this is the way you do it. You do it through prayer, you do it through study, you do it through outreach, you do it through music. You know, you may come in feeling sad or guilty, mm -hmm. but when you leave you should feel elated. Uplated. You should feel better. Uh, yeah. You should Uplated. feel happier. Happy. Yeah, you happy. should feel good. Yeah. You know, as a result, as a result of the service. Now, when these little groups get together, they have a sort of a procedure that they follow. These little small groups, you know, that involve a lot of sharing. You know, as the group gets together, I'm going to share with you, you know, struggles I've had. In a sense, a little like what about like, confession? Almost like AA. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Oh. Like AA. You know, these are the things I'm struggling yeah. with because you are my closest friends. Yeah. Help me deal with this, okay? Let's all have a prayer for for Chris. We know the stuff Chris is dealing with. Uh, that's that's what we end up with, <laughs> and and we do know. Or if you don't know what Chris is dealing with, I'll send you all a text okay. a little later, <laughs> uh, and then you'll know exactly how to pray. And I mean, exactly. She's a wino. Yeah. yeah. And I'll guarantee you, you will not believe it. All right. So, but, but, yes. Did the Methodists start Sunday schools? Well, the, the, they are, but for, for another reason. That, that's going to come a little bit later. But, what, what the, but it's going to be linked to this helping people. Uh, because it's to teach the poor how to read. Right. You know, that's what Sunday school. And the only day they poor people got off with Sunday. And so kids, because kids were working six days a week. And going to public schools. Well, they weren't going to any schools. Yeah. They were working in the mines yeah. Yeah. six days a week. So you went to school on Sunday so you could learn how to read, particularly read your Bible. 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 You know, so they taught you Bible stories because that's how you learn to read. Mm -hmm. But what the Methodists, so what the Methodists are doing is in these groups and, and the Anglicans are looking at, other high church Anglicans are looking at these groups and saying, Mm -mm. Mm. They're doing well. Well, they're looking at them and saying, hmm. They're, not yeah. they're moving away from the rituals, which are the key. Calvinists are looking at their groups and saying, hmm. Mm, you know, that. not emphasizing, you know, good theology. And the Armenians, hmm. Not emphasizing good theology. Mm -hmm. But the Methodists, little Methodist groups, are people in these groups are getting really excited. Uh, called Methodist because they follow a method. Method. method, you know. Now, if you're in church, what would be maybe one of the high points of your religious life? 
What would be a high point communion. in a religious life? Well, communion is going to be even higher maybe than communion. Oh. God. I mean, if you're like a, pat, or like a preacher or something. Let, let, me give it, let me make it even, even maybe clearer. If I come in and I feel bad, bad I feel really guilty. Okay, what what is going to change my confession? Uh, oh, I am going to well, that's part of it. Altar call. When I what happens to me? You feel worse, and you go up to the altar and kneel down, and they come over you, and I accept Jesus. <laughs> All that stuff, and my sins are forgiven. 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 All of a sudden, I've accepted Jesus and my sins are forgiven. Everyone around me in my group is emotional about it. I am saved. Saved. I'm emotional about it. I'm excited about it, right? The minister there is excited about it. The priest is excited about it. You know, I have been saved. Saved. Converted. I've had a conversion experience, right? And that becomes a big deal. Now, if I'm having conversion experiences, theologically, if we've got Calvinism here and Arminianism here, and conversion experiences become a big deal, which of those theologies fit better with conversion experiences? The Armenians. The Armenians. And so a lot, most Methodists kind of become, you know, you are choosing God and you should be excited because because you've chosen God, you are saved. saved. Were you saved before you chose God? No. Nope. No. But when you chose God, bang, you became saved. Now understand, this same emotionalism you're going to see also in Calvinism in America. There's going to be a guy named George Wycliffe, or Wycliffe. And he's going to say, or oh, Whitehead, I'm sorry, Whitehead. He's going to be a Calvinist and going to say conversion is also important. But the conversion is different. The Wesleyans are saying you get converted. When you're converted, you are choosing God, and God is now choosing you. Whitehead is saying you are realizing that you've been chosen. And you know what that makes you? That's it. Really excited. Oh. When you realize that God has chosen you before the foundation of the earth, you are really excited about that. But, and we... that's a conversion experience, too. So they're coming at it from different angles, but it's the same emotional experience. So we have... It's starting to develop. We see that even in Calvinism. That's going to be what's called the new light, old light Presbyterians. You know, are going to be whether they emphasize conversions or whether they follow the strict theology. But that's what the Wesleyans are, are teaching. Now, how does helping other people fit into that? D d that's right. It's emotional doing doing better. We're going to help other people. You bring them. Okay. You bring them to church. Okay. Right. That's right. And now you've got so th that's a little bit of the history. So now we've got this group that becomes bigger and bigger within within Anglicanism. Mm -hmm. Now the Anglicans are they happy? Well, about this group? No. Yeah. No. Some are the ones who are s that sit Still like this. Like they're not. Are they happy? Maybe they are. No. 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 Because people, why Yeah, why are they not happy? The ones that sit like this okay. and are very big on the ritual. There's got to be too much we, restrictions. Okay, that's right. This is this is too free. They also feel and and a lot of it is true. The Methodists look at those priests that are following the service just the way it's supposed to. How do how do the Methodists start viewing them? Above them. I think they're interested. You know, well, they're, 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 they think that they begin to believe they're higher than than the, the congregation. To higher than that. Well, let, I'm not articulating it very well. They, if if I am if I am a, a Methodist and I've had my conversion experience, yes. and man, I am so emotional and I am so fired up about the faith, and and I look at the priest who says, "Pull out your worship book." We're going to start on page 82. How am I going to feel? How might I feel towards that priest? Not, not good. Not, 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 not as happy, right? In fact, I may look at that priest and say... He's boring. You're bringing him down. Okay, he's, he's boring, but maybe even a step beyond that. He maybe that better. priest... Thinks better than you. That or oh yeah, that's what I may think. But what's actually happened is I had the conversion experience. And he, he, he don't. He didn't. 
And so, who is more Christian? Me. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I yeah. am yeah. more Christian. A according to the, the, the minister that uh, uh, I... I he said, those silly, stupid Catholics, neighbors up the street. Mm -hmm. He said, they really believe that's the blood of our Lord. They really believe that's the wafer. He said, but we know it's not true. No, mm -hmm. that's he wasn't not. very... Yeah, well, and, but, see, but see, that's what ends up being... That becomes a real problem, you know, yeah. and that's what and Paul writes about in the 14th chapter of Romans. You know, that you end up having one group saying... This one's better than the other. That's right. <laughs> but but <laughs> who's, who's the best? The one oh, we are. are. You know, yeah. we are. We have the best And we're going to judge because nice. we are more spiritual <laughs> than they. Oh, yeah. And that's... So, so you, we've got, you know, the, the Anglicans that? feel judged. <laughs> some of them feel judged by the Methodists. <laughs> Make it and sometimes funny. valid. The <laughs> Methodists feel that a lot of the Anglicans are too rigid, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And the Anglicans are seeing themselves as maybe more intellectual. You know, Calvinists see them as more intellectual <laughs> yeah. than these guys that are feeling so much emotion when they yeah. are converted. You know, that's that. You got to think about it. You got to reason through. You got to understand. Like they know all the answers. Yes, yes. And so we end up with a break within with Anglicanism. Uh -huh. Now, when you so a Methodist church begins to to develop. Uh -huh. Now, what would be parts of that Methodist church? If given the background I just gave you, what are going to be parts that we'd expect within a Methodist type music. church. Music is going to be a big, big, big deal. Music yeah, is going to be a big deal. Choirs. And what kind of music? Hymns. <coughs> Biblical. Music of the Fun. Music. Fun. Yeah. Pop yeah, yeah. music. Pop music. You know, oh, really? Pop, it's yeah. pop music. That was the word yeah. I was looking for. Yeah, pop. Oh. You know, it, it is. But, but understand, <laughs> we're talking about pop music. We're talking about no, seven, no, 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 18th century <laughs> yeah, pop no, music. Not, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so it's not like pop music. Yeah. What's, what's ironic is a lot of the, the music that's still sung is 18th century pop music. You know, and people don't realize that it, it was sung that, you know, they sang it because it was what people were singing. They were catchy melodies. What, what you know, and people like to sing. Yeah, what catchy melodies. Some of them up what happened with, yeah. with choir? <laughs> we don't, when we look at it, we don't... Well, again, we're talking about a time when people are singing to an organ. You know, an organ isn't a foreign instrument. No. Most no, young people no. have never heard an organ play it, except in church. 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 You know, that wasn't the case well, 300 years ago. No, they they've heard it, but they just don't know they're hearing it because. <laughs> well, that's true. A keyboard uh, on a keyboard. Classical music. But uh, yeah, well, and we all know how much kids love classical yeah. music. They should. Uh, but but you're right. It's keyboard, and also you know you in the past it was movie theaters and stuff. So the organ becomes less and less common. Yeah. You know, and so it becomes a an, a sort of a sacred instrument. You know, as opposed to one that is. Popular, you know, popular. Okay, so that's what else are we going to expect to see within within Methodism? So we're going to see music as a big deal, and worship is going to be music or oriented. What are else we are we going to see as a big deal? Still back in the old time you're talking about uh, today. Well, we're talking about like the time of the American Revolution. Oh, you know, so we're talking about maybe two hundred years ago. Yes. We still talk about communion. Okay, we talk about we talk about communion now. We're going to have different strains of Methodism, that because remember, the focus of Methodism is what what would you describe as really the focus of this method? Methodism? All of the rules. Emotion. 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 Oh. Right. It's a very emotional. So again, just like Anglican, Anglican, it doesn't have a. Strong theology. So all of a sudden you can have a lot of stuff within Methodism. And so some of Methodism is going to focus on the sacraments. And how are the sacraments going to be celebrated? With music. With, with okay, going to be done with music. Music and, and, yeah. and, 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 and maybe with dance, although again, um, you know, you've got a sliding. Yeah. You got a sliding yeah. scale. Sometimes the Bible. Well, some, you know, as you go to extreme, that's what within Methodism we're going to see a lot of like churches spinning out of this Wesleyan mm -hmm. Methodism. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have churches that are going to be higher church Methodists. Yeah. So they're doing communion because remember, the Wesley brothers didn't have a problem with the sacraments in the Anglican Church. Right. They had a problem with 
the emotion involved. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see some Methodist churches that are going to have sacraments that are fairly formal. There's going to be a formality yes. in, um, in administering the sacraments. Yes. On the other hand, you're going to have... At the other end, driving, music. driving or none. Oh. You know that the oh. sacraments no are sacraments. an example of the sterility in the church, okay. and they just aren't that important. Well, you're starting to get into fundamentalism. Well, you're starting to get into what? Evangelical. Okay, now I, I'm going to draw a difference between fundamental because fundamentalism is going to be a set of of intellectual ideas. What you're going to start seeing is you're going to start seeing almost like a Pentecostalism, mm -hmm. you know, that is that is almost pure emotion. And and that's going to be on the other end. What does Episcopal, whatever that was, what are they behind? What's behind them? The Episcopal Church? Yeah. Episcopal Church is really resting on a prayer book. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, all the stuff we talked mm -hmm. about with Christianity. Because they're Christians. Mm -hmm. They believe in Jesus. They believe. So I'm not even going to go into all that stuff that we've already said. Yeah. The, the Episcopal Church has a prayer book. Mm -hmm. The Episcopal Church is a national church with great pride. The Episcopal Church in America mm -hmm. will say, as opposed to every other Protestant church out there, mm -hmm. the Episcopal Church has never split. divided, has never split. Really? You know, it is the national church. Church, Anglican Church of America is the Episcopal Church. Mm. So it is a national church. It is a church that's focused on a a worship book. It is a church that follows certain rules. certain certain rules. Sacraments. That's right. Well, stru mainly structural. Yeah, they have sacraments, but structural rules structural. that they are ruled by bishops, and that's what Episcopal means. Now, inside of that. I may have high church Episcopal that is more Roman Catholic than a Roman Catholic church. Mm -hmm. Or I may have something that looks, is no different than a Methodist church. That is very down to earth and very emotional. All of that can fit within a, the Episcopal church because there's no formal theology. You know, uh, in, the, in the church, as long as you are following the prayer book and as long as you're following the structure and a part of the national church, you are an Episcopal. Is that the Church of England also? Church of England, Church of Nigeria, uh -huh. Church of Southern Africa. Oh, Pat, I'm yeah. sorry, real quick. Uh, was, was, there no, was there no official split uh, over gay clergy? Not in America. Not in America. Oh. Now, within, again, this is, a, this is typical Anglican. Within the Anglican communion, you know, there are certain national churches that have rejected the ordination of homosexuals. You know, Ooh. but... The Church in England, the Church of England, the Episcopal Church in the United States, yeah, did not. it did not. And that's so you could still be part of the Anglican communion, global communion, even though your national churches take a different position. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about theology. Yeah. You know, it is about Human communion. It is about uh, following the, the structure of bishops, mm -hmm. the apostolic Secession of the laws, bishop is following the laws. It's following the prayer book. That's what makes you an Anglican. What about confession? You know, so, well, again, it becomes open now. So within within the Methodist, there is no confession in other churches. Within, well, no. the Lutherans kind of had their toes on the aisle. Most churches don't have confession. Most of church because they don't have priests. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Well, that's what Luther, one of Luther's. I think one of the theses was that you don't need a priest to, to intervene right. between you and right. God. Right. That's right. just right. nonsense. So, nonsense. so with, with Methodism, one of the things, though, with Methodism that becomes really, really important, and this sets it, sets it apart, according to the Wesley brothers, uh, we talked about the Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we said that an Armenianist looks at the Ten Commandments and feels how? How does an Armenianist good. look at it, at the Ten Commandments? Good. Well, let, let's say everybody feels initially good. Well, how does he view them? Probably positive. Okay, views them positively. He has yeah. to. Tell me more. To be obeyed. Okay, to be obeyed. And why is it important to obey them? Because that's, that's God's that's law. law. Because it's God's it's law. It's a choice. And, that's right. It's a choice. You choose to obey Him, right? And mm -hmm. that may reflect the choice you made With, to believe in God, right? right. Yeah. So I look at that Ten Commandments and it says, do not... Covet thy neighbor's do, goods. 
Ooh. <laughs> All right, you picked a good one. Uh, <laughs> do not covet. No, that is a good one because I said, "Do not cover. Do not covet my neighbor's goods." <laughs> right. Now, what makes that? Now, thou shalt not <laughs> kill is yeah. relatively easy mm -hmm. because yeah. I am. For me, I have not killed another human no. being. At least not, you know, there have been people who yes. said, I'm dying of boredom. But other than that, I haven't killed anybody. You know, so I know I'm okay there. Yeah. But coveting? That's an, all day, everybody's that, 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 That's really, really easy. Yeah. In fact, right now, I'm, I've got to admit it, and I'll be honest with you. What do you coveting think? Christian, I Christian am coveting troubles. someone at this table. I am coveting or away from the table. I want to include you, although it doesn't apply. Uh, I am coveting someone's hair. It's not mine. Oh, oh I thought you were going to say dinners. <laughs> say what? The dinners. Oh, the dinners. <laughs> Full heads of hair. I, oh. I am coveting <laughs> someone's hair. Yeah. Likes the curls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm not all. coveting your wuss. I know. Q, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not covering, coveting your wuss. You'd be foolish if you did. No. I thought yeah. you'd be coveting John's wuss. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you like long hair. Oh, yeah. yeah but if I had more of it. In my defense, I'm easy to cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Everybody covers. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, it just goes without <laughs> saying. Wild. Yeah, you but also. Also, coveting <laughs> is not only now, but, envy. But that's well, an easy okay. one. Okay, that's an easy one to identify as being tough, right? Yeah. So I have to determine if I've got to get rid of coveting, how do I know when I'm doing it? You don't. I, I, I don't, so I better start setting up something rules. to determine oh, yeah. what coveting is. Yeah. Right? Yeah, rules. Okay, i got to have rules. Yeah. So rules. as I'm looking at it, I may feel good about it, the need to obey it, but it's going to put... These are standards that I'm going to have to follow or stealing. I'm not going to make it. Yeah, stealing. I'm okay. Yeah. If I'm a Calvinist, how am I going to view? Oh, uh, you, you're, you're trying to try to go to one, but you, you're not. It doesn't matter. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah, okay. So my view is going to be different. <laughs> you're now, not going to. It's just going to make feel good. I'm, I'm a, a Wesleyan, and my emphasis is on emotion mm -hmm. and, and feeling good. Now, if I'm a Calvinist, I'm looking at the law and saying, I can't. I, I, I can't follow it. You know, I, I I can't follow it. Then you don't stay yeah, Calvinist. I'm, I'm, and if I'm a, if I'm an Armenianist, I say you know I better follow it. Mm -hmm. If I'm a Wesleyan and the and the focus is on feeling good about your relationship with God, what might I say about doing about God's the law? work? I'm doing God's work. You better. Okay, okay. I want to be able to say I'm doing God's work, right? Yeah. Which means I want to say what? That you're able to follow. I'm it. able to follow it. Yeah. I'm I'm able to follow the law, mm -hmm. the rules, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, for the for the Wesley brothers, the a possibility exists. God has given each of us the possibility to follow the law perfectly. Mm. There's a possibility of reaching perfection in terms of obedience during this lifetime. I got it. Okay. That's pretty pretty good thinking there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what the Wesleys are saying. That's a possibility. Is it likely? No. I wouldn't no. say no. It is not likely. But it becomes a goal. A goal. It okay. becomes the goal. Okay. Being perfect becomes a goal because we're it's in, possible. We're infallible. We're human, but that we have that ability to make mistakes. Okay, but the Wesley, the Wesley brothers say that you can reach a, time, a point when you're, perfect. you're not making a mistake. You haven't made a mistake. Now, he also says you can screw it up the next day. So it's not like you stay in perfection. Right. So you can reach perfection and then mess up. And then go back to perfection try, and go try. back like and go up back. You know, that you can, that that's what can happen. But perfection is possible. not die when you're on the down. Yeah, a Calvinist <laughs> is going to say, when a Calvinist looks at that and sa sees that perfection is possible, a Calvinist says, No. What are you thinking? You know, because when you're perfect, a Calvinist would say, I have reached perfection. I am, oh, I am obeying God. 
you, you are assuming you're God, and you're no. also saying that Jesus Christ Didn't wasn't necessary. Yeah. Because you can reach that point that you don't without him. Yeah, you don't without him. Okay? But that's that becomes a big thing in Wesleyanism. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't he never says well, you've got to be perfect, but perfection is theoretically possible, which sets them a little bit apart. But again, if the emphasis is on, you know, getting involved in doing things for yeah. others, you won't, you're you not going to send them out. You don't send a person out saying, I want you to go and help feed people, but you're never going to do enough. Mm. Right? Mm. That's but, not going to motivate well, you to go out and do it. Do. You know, no, I, I no. want you to accept Jesus as your, your Lord and Savior, but it's never going to be enough. Yeah. It's always going to That's not going to get you excited. Mm -mm. You know, so the focus is on what you, feel, what you feel. So it naturally follows that you can do it right. Then there's that music you right. that you talked about earlier, entice that, make you want to get up and do the right thing. That's what Wesley would, the Wesley brothers would say, the music, well, it, it's, it's more the music just gets you in the, Mood. the, the spirit, gets you the motivated, like gets you in the spirit, yeah. because the spirit is involved here, and well, the spirit's supposed what, to make you feel what, good. That's what a mo music does, yeah, whether it's a exactly. psalms in a Bible, or pop music, or... Classical music, it, it, it's but, all emotional. But a Cal, uh, the old Calvinist in the face of this would, would say, singing a, a song written by Charles Wesley is wrong. You should be singing the Psalms. Yeah, oh, that's right. They Sing the, the Psalms, Psalms yeah. and not this music by Charles Wesley. Hmm. Because the words are also engaging. You know, it's not just the music, also the words hmm. are easy to sing. You know, it's, it's, it flows. Calvinist doesn't matter whether it flows. I, it is the what? The ambic it is the Bible, and you sing the Bible if you're going to sing anything. And the Wesley said, "Why, man? You should be singing stuff that makes you feel good." Okay, it is that reaction to what is perceived as being being sterile. Okay. What do you mean by that? Sterile, structured. Uh, frozen, unemotional, oh, unemotional, you know. I grew up in a very strict Presbyterian church in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And my family broke away from that church briefly because of some feuds, because of family issues. And we attended a Methodist church out close to where we lived. At that point in time, I was living in Watersville. Mm -hmm. And the preacher there was a young preacher by the name of Reverend Smeltzer, great guy. You would have to understand that Reverend Fontaine, the Presbyterian, he would fit definitely very strict Calvinist, very, you know, you. and we went to that church and an example of how they would get you motivated mm -hmm. is he used one of the popular songs at the time. Now, I'm in high school and it was... Um, Sammy Davis Jr., the candy man. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, oh, Reverend Fontaine would faint. <laughs> and he man, used this, he used this <laughs> as a basis for, you know, and this is the whole difference in how the Methodist church was looking at it at that time, as opposed to what, you know, it was a completely different eye opening <laughs> thing that was going mm. on there because it was like, oh, you know, oh, wow. He obviously you know, didn't know what very, the song meant. <laughs> yeah, he did. There was there was a point he was using it. But it was supposed yeah. to be about But now now when you look at meth if you talk about feeling, different I, things I cause people to feel church. different Man. Yeah. you know different and, and different emotions. And so that's why we end up with a lot of different groups that are affiliated with this Wesleyan movement. United Methodists are one, but you also have, you know, all the you've got Wesleyan churches. Right. You know, they yeah. they come from the Wesleyan tradition, of course. You've got uh, the Nazarene church is coming from the Wesleyan tradition. You know, you've got um, uh, the the Christian Missionary Alliance is coming from the Wesleyan mm -hmm. tradition. All of these are you, you're going to have. Uh, and next week we're going to talk about another whole movement that takes Methodism even further so than another name. An, another name that's going to that's going to have come from this Methodist focus on emotion mm -hmm. is going to take it another step, and that's going to be. Pentecostalism, which is going to take is going to come from this Wesleyan root. That what is key is emotion, 
feeling emotion. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get this Pentecostal movement that's going to take it even further. Mm -hmm. Then the Methodists are comfortable taking it. You know, uh, and that's what we'll look at next week. Okay. Good. Yes. A real quick question. Uh, the, the, when you, just a lot of the Methodist churches, you know, on the outside, they have that, that symbol of burning. Cross. Yes. Yes. Does that have to do with, like, the burning heart? That, that yes. A, a, absolutely. Burning it's a symbol cross. of the United yeah. Methodist Church, a cross with a flame. Yeah. And, and it's going to be that flame is Holy Spirit. Oh, and so no, what no. the Methodists are going to, going to say is the, the, that's what Charles Wesley is. You feel emotional because the Spirit is, you've kind of caught the Spirit. The Spirit's okay. caught you, and you're feeling emotional. Uh, that's what the Wesley brothers are going to say. So that flame there is going to be that the, oh, yeah. the Holy Spirit. Now, as a great, and I think the symbols are really comparing the symbols. Yeah. This tells the difference between Presbyterian and Methodist. Mm -hmm. You were talking about United Methodists. They have a cross and what? A flame, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Presbyterian Church has its symbol. Mm -hmm. And it's, and I, I wish I had a, a picture of it. Is there a... Right. Pull it where it's yeah. pro No, this yeah. one right down here. Mm -mm. Over. Over. That one. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. See that oh, show. Okay. Now no, that's, that's small. You, you see. Oh, it's on oh, the cover oh, even yeah. better. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. See that. Needs to see it. Okay. No, no. Here, I, I here you go. <laughs> you see this? Yeah. The Methodist is a is a cross with a flame, right? Mm -hmm. This is the Presbyterian symbol, and this is typical. This is why people go nuts over Calvinism. This is the Presbyterian symbol. Mm. Now, when you look at it, what does it look like? A picture. Like a cross cross with well, the thank face. you. That's what a kid once I did for children. I said, "This is a symbol of the Presbyterian Church." What does it look like to pitchfork. you? And he said, "The devil's pitchfork." Yeah. Uh, which kind of <laughs> messed up my little time with children. But uh -huh. this is this is but ah, uh, this is a. It, you got a cross here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Two little flames. But it's not just a cross. Because we've got up top here. A tulip. Well, it's I not a tulip. Yeah. It, a is a, a it is a bird. A bird. It is a that dove. Bird? Descending dove. Oh, I but see. If you, you're a little dove. Yes. But if you look at the middle of the dove. No body. It is. Well, there's a yeah, the body there's right a body. there. A body. Yeah. The, the body of the dove is shaped like a fish. Mm -hmm. Ichthus. Ancient oh, yeah. symbol of the church. Yeah. So we have a dove. So in that little dove there, we've already got a fish. Two symbols. Two symbols. Now remember, Methodist is a cross and a flame. Mm -hmm. Presbyterian, that little top has already got two symbols. Mm -hmm. Okay, the cross part here. Mm -hmm. You see the top line because it's, it's divided into three. Mm -hmm. You see the top part of that. Mm -hmm. It's not straight it's across. Straight. No, it's no. not. It kind of goes in in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That represents a dent. The Bible. the Bible. Oh. It looks like a book open. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. The middle one yeah, yeah. kind of sinks in the middle. Same way. Okay. Ooh. Why would it sink in the middle? That's, that's a symbol of a book. Again. Cup. That's a symbol of a cup. Now, oh, the bottom it's cross, it's the round. bottom of it, yes, because it's round. Yeah. The bottom goes over and down. Now that's just over and down, right? Mm -hmm. That's nothing. Oh no! In the Presbyterian symbol, that represents the aisle in the middle of a church. Uh -huh. So this is an aisle. All right. Now we've already how many symbols do we have shoved in? And now you've got two. You've got two flames. Well, flames, good symbol for devil, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Devil. Maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Holy Spirit. Yeah. But there are two of them. Methodists just have that one. Because mm -hmm. we've, we've got two. Why do we have two? Heaven and earth. Oh, Lord, have so what? Particular. We have one more. <laughs> we have one more. We're, we're twice as good as a Methodist. <laughs> no. No, no, we've got Old and New Testament. Uh, we're smarter. Oh. Now, now, this is, like I said, this is typical this is typical Calvinist. Oh. What you're doing is you're shoving tons of intellectual symbols In, into this. One symbol. Methodist, it's a simple symbol that you look at and feel. feel. Yeah. And, and right there is, man, it is a textbook example of 
the bad rap realistic rap that that Calvinists get just we overthink stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got more but on the other hand mm-hmm. that maybe the emotional they may be underthinking, underthinking. underthinking. you know arresting so much on emotion that there's no substance We've covered everything on that. yes it's like it's like having it's sort of like having uh, trees you know trees need roots and leaves and water. you know and water but a tree needs roots if you don't have roots you, don't you know, it's going to die. If you don't have leaves, it's going to die. You know, so it needs both. And, and you know, that's kind of, to me, the, the roots is sort of into tradition and intellect. Nice. But you also have to have leaves that are constantly changing and are dynamic. And, and bloom. And, and, and feed the tree and, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. look beautiful and cause you to feel emotion. You don't feel emotion when you look at the root, but you do when you look at the leaves. Mm-hmm. And I think you need both. And the danger of Calvinism is maybe too much root. And the danger of, of the direction Wesley and Wesley too takes is too much, much too, too many leaves and not enough root. You feel emotion against the roots if you have to dig up your sewer and you got <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> you feel a lot of And and on on that note, people in Nigeria that are not worried about digging up for sewers. Uh, <laughs> Let's let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for guiding us through this. Remind us that the this emotion that, that the Wesley brothers introduced into the faith not only was biblically based, but we is should be part of our faith. So help us claim some of that emotion uh, within ourselves, along with the intellect that sometimes the Wesleyans tended to neglect. Help mm-hmm. us to find that balance. Uh, so that we can best understand you and, most importantly, to serve you. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Now-